Good afternoon <laughs> and welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to do a quick sound check um, for everyone who is live and can hear us right now. Can you give us a thumbs up or your favorite emoji, whatever that may be? Also, um, if I can just ask, if you haven't clicked that link for StreamYard, uh, could you do that now? That would be great. That just gives us um, the ability to see what's what's happening <laughs> and, and see your questions and that sort of thing. Um, I also just wanted to say, for those who have joined this on a watch party or something else, um, and you haven't RSVP'd to Eventbrite, if you want uh, the recipe book, the free recipe book that uh, Leah is giving out after this, um, I'm going to chuck a link into the chat and uh, feel free to put your details in and we'll send that out to you. First off, I wanted to say thank you so much for being here. My name is Amy Roach and I'm the owner of Retail Rockstars and the Academy here is where we put together some fun events. We normally do this in a store setting um, for retailers. But uh, today, Lee and I decided, since everyone's at home, that we'll just put one on online. So there you go. Um, a little bit about our rock star today. Um, she's a nutritional therapy practitioner, and she's also the head honcho at Nourishing Conversations. And she also has a really cool podcast called um, Low Carb Conversations. And I've known her for quite a few years now. She's been one of my rock stars, I think, going on seven years, maybe? Seven or eight years, yeah. yeah. it's been a while. Um, so she's been living the, you know, real food movement and low carb sort of uh, lifestyle for quite a while, eight or nine years, Leah? Yeah. Something like true. that. Um, and what I love so much about Leah is that she has a really casual, no nonsense approach to helping people. So if you could all please welcome Leah Williamson today from Nourishing, Nourishing Conversations um, and maybe give her some uh, emoji love. That would be great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, like Amy said, we're normally in the, you know, uh, re in the retail stores. So this is a little bit different for both of us being here. So um, and not actually being able to see your face to get that direct feedback. So don't forget yeah. if you've got any questions or anything like that to uh, pop it into the chat group and we'll try and answer them that way for you. So now I'm going to make my screen full screen. Here we go. So you can see all the equipment on my table. Okay. So uh, I'm Leah Williamson. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm a functional nutritional therapy practitioner and I, my focus is predominantly real food. So helping families get the most out of uh, real food, fast food on the table in a matter of minutes, like without having to reach for too much uh, processed food or packages. And when we are using packages, making sure that we're getting the best quality uh, foods for those. So um, I founded the Brisbane Paleo Group way back in the day. And uh, while paleo is my like one true love, uh, I recognize that everybody is bio-individual and so I take that approach with everyone that I meet. So uh, now if you're just joining us and you haven't registered, Amy's going to pop up a form because afterwards I'm giving out uh, an ebook with all the recipes in it that match everything that I'm going to be cooking today. And it's the ebook's called The Chicken Story and this really is a story about the chicken <laughs> and as you can see I've got uh, the humble roast chicken here, or whole chicken on the table. I've got a cooked one over here in front of me, and I've got the uh, raw one here. These chickens are from Sherwood Road Organic Meats. They are organic, beautiful uh, chickens full of great nutrients. And as we go through the show, I'll explain to you why, nutri why having a good quality chicken is important um, for the nutrients out of that. So I'm going to take this chicken and turn it into many different meals, and the whole reason why it was called the chicken story for want of a better name was basically just take, taking this one chicken and turning it into as many different meals as we can so that we're not wasting food and my goal here today is we're all at home most of us are uh, at home and 
we're eating more at home. So I just want to show you some quick recipes that you can throw together uh, with little to no ingredients. We'll substitute how we can substitute out different ingredients as well uh, in case uh, you can't get stuff at the shops, which can be the case at the moment. Um, a little bit of shortage in certain things. So I'll talk to you about how we can sub that out because I couldn't get a couple of the ingredients that I normally use. So I'll show you how I just make that uh, work with that. So um, we'll get started. And so first, we're going to take the whole roast chicken, which I have here, this beautiful one from Sherwood Road Organic Meats. And so we're going to roast it first. We're going to either roast it or we're going to cook it in my pressure cooker. And so to roast it, uh, it's you know super easy. Most people know how to put a roast on, but just in case you don't, I'll just give you a few tips. So um, when I roast a chicken, I like to actually, the chicken will come with its little um, wings kind of folded underneath. I like to pop them out just so that you can get the cooking the whole way around the chicken. And then I like to uh, get my knife here and just make little inserts into the um, skin, just little ones. Now, if you eat butter, you can do dairy. It's really great to stick some butter up in there. Uh, today, I'm going to put a couple of garlic cloves up in there as well and then just shove that up under the skin. So that way, the butter and the garlic infuse all over the chicken and it's beautiful. And then you can see it just goes this delicious crispiness um, in the oven. So that's in front there. And um, and so then you put in, I, I actually get a whole layer um, in my dish of vegetables, anything that I've got on hand. So... Um, and, and then cook the chicken on top of that so that all the chicken juices, the butter, and everything can fuse down into that. So this is like just a, some of the cooked vegetables that I made today. So I had some carrot. The kids only eat carrot, so I put carrot in there. Got to get them something that they're going to eat. Zucchini, onion, um, sweet potato. We had some of that around. The kids eat that. If you're doing low carb and you don't eat or keto, you don't eat um, sweet potato, just put cauliflower in there. Just put whatever you've got lying around in the fridge that you normally eat. That's really great for roasting. There's so many different things you can roast that you don't even realize, like um, celery. Roasted celery is delicious. Roasted radishes are delicious. Um, just all those kind of vegetables that you wouldn't normally think of, just get creative and they all create different flavors. And so once I've buttered up the chicken, I drizzle it in some uh, delicious olive oil and then um, season it with salt and pepper. And then you can use whatever herbs you like. So you could use your thyme, rosemary, all those herbs, uh, beautiful fresh ones better if you can. And if you can't get fresh, then uh, use the ones um, that you've got available to you. I'm all about making things work with what you have available. And using these is still better than, say, running out for takeaway or McDonald's every night, right? So if you can't get fresh, try for the next best, which is in a packet. Uh, so that's kind of in the oven, and then I leave that to cook. Now, when I turn the oven on, I never waste an opportunity. So while the oven is on, we're going to load it up and just make some extra trays of veggies, stick it all in there, whatever you can do while the oven is on. Uh, I like to write out a list of all the things I'm going to do. So I might do, if you've got a big family, I might do two chickens, two trays of roast veggies. Then you might want to cook something for dessert after. Maybe you've got a nice recipe for a paleo apple crumble or a keto cake or something, you know, or something that the kids might eat. So just, you know, never waste that opportunity. All right. And so then um, a very quick way, say you've only got 20 minutes and you want to cook the whole chicken, then I absolutely love my pressure cooker. This is the Breville Fast Slow Cooker. This, my one, I've had since the beginning. So Amy mentioned at the start that we have been cooking together for seven or eight years. This has been my most favorite product. If anyone asks me what I need in my kitchen, what would I recommend? It is this Breville Fast Slow Cooker. And Amy has one, which is the uh, Fast Slow Pro, which has the lid attached. If you're like me and have trouble with lids and putting them on, that one's already got the lid <laughs> attached for you. Uh, and so um, it's fantastic. So what I really love to do is put it onto sear and I'm going to sear the chicken, the, this chicken that I've just done. So I'm just gonna walk off camera for a second and show you. So it's got this little function button here. I put it on to sear. I'm going to put the time up. Oh. It's a bit hard to do from the side. Put the time up on it. Put it up to about 20 minutes or so. And then I'm going to hit start. 
and it's going to start um, searing the base. And this is the, the container that comes out of it. That fits a whole roast chicken plus vegetables. It's got a really great size in it. So when that heats up, I sear the chicken, bring out all the juices of the chicken. The chicken gets a nice crispy edge to it. I bring the chicken back out and then I find my veggies. So when I'm in the slow cooker, I like to do like the standard mix of a bit of onion, some cut up diced um, carrot, some diced celery, some more garlic, and then I cook that through the chicken juices and the oil that's just come out of the chicken to give it that really beautiful flavour and bring it all out. And then when that's done searing the veggies, so you don't have to cook them through because they're going to cook, right? So we're just putting a small amount in, um, uh, just giving it that little bit of time to get all that um, fat coated all over the veggies really nicely. Now I'm going to put the chicken back in and I'm going to put a small amount of broth. Now, if you don't have any chicken broth on hand because we're going to make broth next, you might not have any in the freezer or reserve. There's a couple of store brought ones that I find really good. This one um, from the health food store, it's called Good Bones. It's got really great ingredients in it, all clean ingredients. It's got um, a really organic, it's all organic. Now, if that's not in your budget or you can't get to the health food store, then you can just pick up good old Maggie Beer uh, from the supermarket. She uses a free range chicken and she's got some um, vegetables in there, all clean ingredients as well. So those are the two that I'd recommend. The ones that come in the carton usually have pretty yuck ingredients in them, not so great. So um, looking for good quality, clean ingredients. And I just put a cup or two of that in the bottom. And that's really just so that when we put the um, chicken onto pressure, it's gonna come right up to the pressure and cook really nicely. And then the juices from the chicken will infuse with the veggies and the broth and actually I've got a really delicious little broth started there already. Uh, the chicken only takes 25, 20 to 25 minutes to cook in the pressure cooker. The whole chicken, and this is a size 14 I think, and uh, takes about 20 minutes. When it's done, pull it out. Now if you want it to go really crispy, you could stick it back in the oven for another 10 minutes if you wanted to get that crispy skin edge. But because we seared it, the skin's pretty tasty anyway and it stays pretty good. So then I take that out. And then I've got um, this, all these veggies uh, left over. So um, the veggies that I cooked just in the broth then, but also the veggies that I've cooked in the uh, trays in the oven. So because I put the extra veggies in, what I'm gonna do now is make a frittata out of that. And that frittata I'm gonna eat for breakfast for the next few mornings. So now I've already made a dinner and a lunch, and also I'm gonna be now adding to that a, a breakfast. So I get all these delicious veggies out that I have here. Uh, if you love bacon, which I'm sure there's so many of you watching, you can add some bacon to this, you just pre-cook it. You can caramelize some onions. So I love just getting some red onion and just um, cooking that in some butter. And if you don't do butter, you can use ghee or you can um, just do it in olive oil or coconut oil and just get that really nice caramelization going. And then I lay that all down into the tray. I get my eggs. I've got some beautiful, um, so eggs, some people have been saying eggs have been a little bit difficult to get lately, and they are in a bit shorter demand. Um, but I've been finding through Spray Free Pharmacy where I work, we've got eggs pretty much all the time. So um, they're from Echo Valley, and they are free range, uh, beautiful eggs straight from the farm. So they're a good option if you can get those. Um, if not, just do the best that you can do with what is around. Um, I would just always have, um, whenever I see carton eggs, just buy carton eggs if I'm at the shops, just to have handy because they make such a great meal whenever you need to. Then I would just crack the 12 eggs, whisk it up, pour it into my um, dish. I've got a dish like this, a Pyrex one, but it's just a bit bigger. Uh, and I put all the veggies on the bottom. I put the eggs mixture through that. Now, if you do dairy, here's where you could have mixed a little bit of cream in with the egg if you want to to make it more creamier. I don't do dairy, so I would just probably add some uh, coconut cream into that and then uh, mix that all together. You can leave it without any cream. It still tastes great either way. Um, if you do dairy, you, uh, you can do cheese on top if you do cheese uh, and then put that in the oven. Um, I sprinkle the bacon on top just to give it a little bit of extra crunch. The kids really like that. And uh, that usually makes about, well, it's four adult servings of frittata out of that one that you can have for breakfast each morning. So that's basically for my husband and I, two breakfasts that we don't have to worry about during the week. It's already made and put away. 
Now, back to the chicken. <laughs> so going back to the chicken, I'm gonna pull all the meat off the chicken if we haven't eaten most of it for dinner already anyway, but there'll be some left over. And I'll use that to make a chicken salad for lunch the next day. So I'm already getting another meal out of that. So get all the chicken off that. Now, so chicken salad, super easy. You just need to get your chicken, uh, uh, sorry, your lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, whatever it is, you know, all the standard lettuce kind of stuff. If you don't have any of that at home, maybe getting to the end of the cupboard, then something that I really like is um, just adding some ferments to it. So just a bit of chicken, and I love these Lewis and Sun ones. Um, this is a cauliflower mixed one. So I just have a bit of chicken and some of this cauliflower mix, and it makes a great lunch straight away. I also do a kale one, so you could mix all you could mix that together or have them separately. But I always have a jar of sauerkraut or ferment, some kind of fermented vegetables in the fridge at all times. You can even add that to your salad if you're running a bit low on veggies. Still tastes great mixed through everything. Amy, did you have any questions or, yeah? I'm gonna try and bring you back up into the screen. Yes, there was a question about how much, um, how much cream to use. Oh, um, well, I, yeah, I don't really cook with cream, but if I'm putting the coconut cream into it, yeah. I probably only put, um, a couple of tablespoons in just to give it just while I'm whisking the eggs just to give it that real creamy kind of flavor yeah you don't need to add okay. too much and do you oil the the dish as well um I haven't found once because the vegetables have been cooked in the chicken fat and I put the vegetables on the of the tray so I don't normally need to grease the tray okay yeah all right so we've done our chicken salad now uh, so yeah, just always keep a jar of ferments. Uh, I always keep a jar of good quality olives in the fridge. So these um, items are, I would say personally, much better for you than keeping a jar of baked beans in the cupboard at the moment. I know everybody's worried about whether there's gonna be food shortages or not, but having uh, a good quality jar of ferments and a good quality jar of olives in the fridge is gonna make up so many more nutrient dense meals than say um, your Heinz baked beans in the in the cupboard, um, which you can only buy two of now anyway. <laughs> so um, I don't know if there's a limit on ferments. So you could go up and you could put a couple in the fridge and they last pretty well so long as you keep them under the brine, then you won't have any trouble. So get creative with your salad, you know, make it any way that you want to make it. Salad's a pretty easy thing to make as well. There's nothing here that I'm going to be showing you that is super hard or needs many ingredients. It's all about simplicity and the nutrient density of the food will do the talking for you. Okay, so now I have shredded all of the chicken and what I've got left is the bones and we don't want to waste the bones. So we're going to make a simple bone broth out of that. And while I was cutting up my vegetables, I actually saved all the ends of the veggies. So this is the end of the leek I used, some carrot peel, uh, zucchini ends, celery leaves, all of those. And what I will do is with the chicken carcass, I will put that over into my slow cooker. This is the why it's so good is because it does the pressure cook and it does the slow cook, which is just amazing. So I put the chicken bones back in. I put my ends of all my veggies. If that's not enough, I'll put more veggies in there. Um, if I'm wanting to kind of like give my immune system a really good kick, I'll put some turmeric in there and some ginger in there. Uh, I'll put some uh, garlic and just let that all, and then I'll put my water in there, salt and pepper, and then I let that all infuse in the slow cooker for about six to eight hours. When I'm doing a, a beef, beef bone broth or a lamb bone broth, I'll probably do a little bit longer, maybe 24 to 48 hours. But chicken, because um, it can really uh, break down a lot, I tend to like to do my um, chicken broth no longer than eight hours. I don't like it kind of getting that chalky kind of taste that can happen when you leave it in there too long. Uh, so this is why I mentioned earlier on the quality of the chicken is really important. So the quality matters because what we're doing now is cooking for an extended length of time, the bone broth, and what's happening is the nutrients are coming out of the bones and that's going into what we're going to be drinking. So that for me is not negotiable. I will spend the extra money in our budget when I'm doing a bone broth to have good quality, free range past, um, and organic chicken bones. And I do the same when I'm cooking a meat broth as well. 
I, d I won't compromise on the quality there. There's other areas that I don't mind compromising on, um, you know, due to budget constraints and things like that. But if I'm going to be drinking uh, the liquid from something that's been soaking for, you know, eight hours to 48 hours, I'm, I want the best quality coming out of that for my body. Bone broth, super simple. That's it, basically. Nothing um, special to it. A good sign it's done is when it cools down, it'll be all wobbly and jelly-like. Um, it also have a layer of fat usually across the top with the chicken one. I usually, um, that layer of fat, some people do love. I, I don't like the chicken kind of one on the top there, so I'll just scrape that off and um, then I just have a nice uh, broth. So then the broth. So Amy, I might pause for a second because is there any more questions at this stage? Hi, Leah. No, there's not any, it, they're mostly around um, the measurements. And measurements, so, yeah. yeah, if you, if you want to just remind everyone that you'll be sending, you know, the email out as soon as we finish this, that might yeah, be so. helpful and set people's mind at ease. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So yeah, I'm a very throw together type cook, you might have noticed. And um, I will just be like zooming through these recipes. But at the end, I will be sending the recipes out with the detailed uh, measurements for people who love their measurements. And um, then, so with that, if you haven't signed up already, then there's a, a sign-on sheet that Amy's posted in the links and just put your name into there and I will email you the recipe book straight after we're finished here today. So then you can get cooking. And the one thing I wanna say too about the ebook is that, and this, what I'm showing you here is, obviously I'm giving you some base ideas and inspiration, but I really want you to take this and make it your own. You know, put your own flair to it. Add your own herbs and spices. Add things that you have in the cupboard. You know, that you can't go wrong. It's just, you know, we're just simply experimenting with meals here. You can probably go wrong. I know I have made things where my kids <laughs> haven't wanted to eat it, too much turmeric or something like that. But, you know, on the whole, um, adding some, you know, different herbs combinations that you haven't tried before. Uh, we've got Google that will tell us whether, you know, you could try beforehand and say, oh, Leah said to use rosemary, but I only have this herb um that's called uh sage with sage work in it and you and you know you could either experiment or and see if it does or you could actually google it and say with sa does sage go with chicken and it'll tell you straight away uh the power of technology these days <laughs> all right i've got nine minutes and i've got three more recipes to get through so we've made our bone broth now and we're going to move on to my most favorite soup um, so my most favorite soup is this Thai coconut soup that I do in my blender. Uh, you can do a stove top version today. I'm only just going to show you the blender version because it is so simple. And once you see it, you're not going to want to do it any other way. Uh, I've got all my lovely Thai herbs. Uh, I've got lemongrass that I've chopped up. I've got galangal. I've got ginger. I've got garlic. Um, I've got, so this is galangal. If anyone doesn't know, it's kind of like, it's like ginger. Um, ginger, I've got a chili, you can put a chili in there, you can leave that out if the kids are going to have it, and I've got my bone broth already sitting here in the blender, and then I'm just simply putting my herbs into there, and I'm going to put um, some coriander, which is in front of me and I was looking for it, <laughs> I've got some coriander here. Um, now, if your children don't like things that are green, don't put coriander straight into the soup because it will turn it green. Uh, what you can do is get the coriander roots and scrub them really well, chop them up and put the roots into here. You can do both if you like both. Um, I'm just gonna put some of the leaves in today. These coriander, I was limited with what I could get. The roots were already taken um, off it. Now, you know, you might not be able to get all of these ingredients that I've listed. The other ingredient that I would normally put in here is kaffir lime leaves. They give this that, that beautiful lime um, flavor, real zingy kind of taste into the soup, which just really makes it a, that Thai sensation. But um, I wasn't able to get any kaffir lime leaves. And so uh, I'm just going to use some lime in it. So you're just going to make do with the best that you can do at this point in time. Limes are um, pretty much around at the moment. I squeeze a bit of juice in. I also uh, just um, zest some of the um, skin into there. That'll give it a nice lime flavor as well. Um, so that's basically all I've got in there. And then I'm going to put my coconut milk in there as well. So. Uh, this one is an organic one that I get from uh, the health food store. This one uh, is AM brand, which you can get from the supermarket. 
it's not organic, but it's a really clean ingredient. It doesn't have any other um, BPAs or anything like that in it. It's just a straight coconut milk. So your choice, what you would like to use um, and what's in your budget and where you're shopping and what you're limited to getting. So um, I'm going to put the coconut milk into here as well. It's making a big splash everywhere, so hopefully I'm not hitting the computer. Normally when people come to my shows, I usually hit them in the front row if you're sitting there. Watch out. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to put my lid on. Now I'm not going to go the whole way through this, but uh, this blender, which is the Breville Boss, Mine's the one I've had for like um, seven to eight years, makes the best smoothies, everything great. Uh, Amy has the new one, which is super fantastic. So just when you go into the store, you'll see it's got all these great attachments. But it has a soup function, so I just hit soup. And... Now, that goes for six minutes. It blends everything up super well so that it doesn't even have anything... Um, chunky in it whatsoever and it heats it at the same time so basically I can eat it straight away straight after I have my soup ready to go and then lastly the other soup I really love is the chicken noodle soup and uh, I would just get the plain broth base I get my veggies that I love like you know carrot celery whatever it is that I like to have in there and then I put my noodles uh, in there once I've finished cooking it so the noodles that I really like to use would be zucchini noodles where you would just get your spiralizer and um or a spiralizing machine or your, or your peeler and you can just make noodles out of that. They go really nicely in it. Uh, if you kids don't like these green zucchinis like mine don't, then um, I've got some sweet potato noodles that you just get in the Asian section. They're quite nice. Uh, low carb versions, you can get the cognac noodles. You can also use um, edamine bean noodles. That's a new one that's out. My kids didn't really like the taste of them though, so it depends how fussy your children are. All right, and last recipe. This is the bonus one. This is a really quick one. Uh, so <laughs> when you just want a couple of ingredients and something to throw together, I have some frozen spinach that I've just kept in the freezer ready to go at any time. So that's another pantry staple that I love is the spinach. Um, frozen, keep it in there. It um, uh, comes in like chunk sizes, so you can just pull out what you need. And then I add my coconut cream to it, which is another pantry staple that I'll always have. Mix them together. Put it down, layer that into my tray um, for the oven, crack four eggs on top, and then you can add whatever herbs you like, salt, pepper, paprika, um, garlic, onion, any of those things that you love. Put that into the oven and then bake your eggs. And then you've got baked eggs and spinach. Makes a great lunch meal, makes a great breakfast, really nutrient dense, and it's just from three simple ingredients that you can have in the pantry or in the fridge or freezer. So basically frozen spinach, eggs and coconut milk super easy all right i think i'm up to my time and i'm going to try and bring amy back up <laughs> here we go <laughs> hello wow that was fast and furious hey <laughs> all these meals in 30 minutes and you can do it too <laughs> right it's like six minute abs yeah <laughs> we should do a game no, that, yeah <laughs> No, that was really good, Leah. Thank you so much. Um, I really enjoyed that. Some good extra ideas that I hadn't had before. So that's lovely. Uh, for anyone else, we're going to stick around for a couple of minutes. If you do have any questions for Leah, um, pop them in uh, the comments below and I'll try to field those for you um, or let Leah know anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we'll be sending out that recipe book um, you don't need to fill in that form if you've RSVP'd with um, Eventbrite. So we've already got your email details and everything. It's just for some people who have just randomly um, joined the live. Um, if you did want the recipe book, that's all. Um, so let me have a quick look again here. And Thanks see. everyone for joining us. I hope you got some meal inspiration and ideas out of this event. And yeah, and if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to put your questions in. I'll always jump in and be able to answer any of those questions that you might have. And like we said, don't worry about the measurements. We'll send them out in the recipe. So if you are watching it and you're like, how much did you say? <laughs> So um, yeah, but I, my main goal out of everything that I do is just to give you some inspiration in the kitchen and just using simple ingredients that you can easily find and with tools that uh, I find, uh, you know, really simple and easy to use. Like I can't live without my Breville fast slow cooker and my Breville boss, um, the two of them 
do everything that I need to do in the kitchen. If anyone asks me what I like to recommend in terms of products, they're the ones. So, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like uh, I have a lot of thank yous, a lot of uh, love hearts and, you know, appreciation, but I don't think, um, I, I don't see any sort of technical questions or, or things um, oh, about this. Actually, I can see, um, they've asked what's the difference between coconut milk and coconut cream. So coconut milk is oh. just more watered down. So um, the cream is a lot thicker. And you can make coconut milk out of the coconut cream. So if you want to be really economical, you can actually just buy a can of coconut cream, split it in half, add some water to that, make it into the milk and save the other half. It freezes or you can put it in the fridge for a couple of days. Just don't put it in plastic because um, the coconut milk will go slimy. So just put it in glass in the fridge or freeze it in the freezer and use it another time. So if you're at the supermarket or you're in a budget and you can only get coconut cream, then yeah, just buy the coconut cream and water it down for coconut milk. Like double it? Um, it's really up to you what consistency you want. So yeah, gotcha. I would, I would, you know, you can add probably like half a cup of water to the half a can of coconut cream, and it's going to give you a nice consistency to add to your to your food. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could taste that uh, that chicken Thai soup at the moment <laughs> needs a good blend first but yeah <laughs> yeah it is lunchtime, so i'm sure everyone's hungry now right wow. i'm gonna be but eating we'll... this chicken here yeah. that i cook yeah and you're lucky <laughs> so this is something that i do all the time at home it's you know it's some, it's really uh very easy to do yeah. like it, yeah it's just I just, it's like I go, I go through the motions of it all the time now um, without even thinking about it because I've done it so many times. Yeah. Okay. And um, so I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. Thank you so much for being here. Um, it was fun. It was very fast. Uh, <laughs> and so hopefully everyone got to take some notes um, along with uh, the recipes that will be coming your way in just a couple of minutes probably. Right, Leah? Yeah, I'll jump on yeah. straight away afterwards. So make sure you get your email addresses in the um, form if you haven't done that already. And then yep. uh, I will sit down and uh, send out the recipe so you can get cooking. And I'd love to see any creations that you do. So feel free to contact me. You can um, find me on Instagram under Nourishing Conversations. So you can tag me there. Or you can jump on my Facebook pages nourishing conversations or brisbane paleo family you can um, take me there uh, find me there you can uh, ask any questions there if you want to or you can in my ebook all the details are there if you want to send me an email um, i love getting uh pictures of creations that everybody's cooked me too yeah yeah i like to see how everyone's inspired by these it's great <laughs> okay well thank you very much uh thanks leah and thank you everyone else for joining us today and um we'll catch up with you very soon yeah thank you let me know what you want to hear next i'll be happy to uh put some shows together around that and i've just got to end that broadcast <laughs> <laughs>